Welcome to another episode of Brunch with Isame. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know it's been like a month since I posted an episode. Life has been crazy. Today was a really good day. My friend Naomi, she drove up and we spent the day together just doing content creation and stuff like that. So we made a few TikToks, took some Instagram pictures, all that fun stuff. And I just finished creating some Instagram reels, so if you're not following me on Instagram, it is at isomev, you can find me there, as well as YouTube, isomev, that's my channel's name, and there you can find all the behind the scenes, my daily life, some cute reels, some, you know, just fun things. I'm going to start this episode like I always do, starting with the peak of the week. So my peak of this week is that my cat is still alive. I will go into the details of that a little bit later, but he had a near-death experience and it was quite traumatizing. And if you don't know this, I actually lost my first cat. He ran away last year this time and he was around the same age as the cat we have now, so it was very triggering for me. But thank God that Antoshka is fine. He survived and he is thriving. He has a very short memory and he is you know, just back to the way he was before. I'm super cautious with him, but I will go into that a little bit later. That is definitely my peak of the week, as well as my valley. I think this happened about last week, but my valley was that near-death situation of my cat. Um, if you have a pet, you know that when you have a pet, it could be for a short time or a long time, after a while they become like a part of the family like a family member they're not just like oh an animal that you see once around like they are a part of the family and that is definitely how i felt with my pets at all times so i'm my valley was that he had a near-death experience but my peak was that he was okay and he is recovering so the title of this podcast is girl math but before i go into that i want to share with you a few of my favorites thus far it is fall and i have a few fall favorites to share the first being the ugg tasman i think it is slippers oh my word my husband is the best he bought me a pair and they are sold out in women's sizes like the average woman's size size six to nine they are literally sold out and a fun fact if you want to get access and a hold of these slippers just order the men version if you're watching on youtube i might be able to insert a picture here what the tasman slippers look like i'm going to be posting them all over my instagram that stuff like that but they're these super comfy ugg slippers that are about ankle height with a lot of fuzzy fur on the inside and this cute almost embroidered um top all around the ankle the most popular one is the color red but i got this like black brown kind of embroidery which still looks absolutely gorgeous and you can wear them with flare jeans leggings and high socks you can wear them with literally anything a matching lounge set so i'm super excited for that purchase and i already wore them today and they're really comfortable and what i really like about uggs is that the more you wear them the more they kind of shape to your feet so don't worry if you order them and it's a little tight it, the fabric is made so it will expand a little and form to your feet so it is very very nice and i love them my next fall favorite is matcha lattes with oat milk if you know me i do not like well, I don't like because I didn't grow up around it, but like cow's milk is not really my thing. And I had matcha lattes and they were good, but substituting the regular milk for oat milk has been a game changer. I am obsessed. Two pumps of vanilla, matcha, ma matcha latte with um, oat milk instead of regular milk. That is definitely my fall favorite. I will get that iced. I will get that warm. I do not care. It is so delicious. I'm thinking I'm going to have to start making my own matcha soon. I drink green tea every morning just from like a tea bag and it's good. But something about that creamy matcha oat milk, vanilla, it's just so warm and cozy. So I don't know, maybe I will start doing that soon. But matcha lattes have been my absolute favorite this fall. 
Oh, another one of my fall favorites that I mentioned on my YouTube. If you're not subscribed, go subscribe to my YouTube channel. I post every week to every other week and I'm posting my favorites all the time. But I got these flare jeans from Target and they are so nice. They're high-waisted and they're tight around the waist and they are just nice and loose all the way down. Perfect length for the tall girlies out there. You understand how hard it is to find jeans that are our length. But check out Target. They have some really cool um, fall outfits. So many people have asked me where I got these jeans. And I'm sure they were probably expecting the answer of like, oh, Aritzia, Zara, Zara, H&M. Nope, they're from Target. And they're my favorite pair of denim thus far. And I love them. If you want to participate in the podcast, don't forget, you can email in to brunchwithisome at gmail.com. We share dilemmas on the podcast, funny story times, and we just have a fun time. So if you want to be a part of it, feel free to email brunchwithisome at gmail.com. Okay, so before we jump into the girl math part of this episode... I'm going to be sharing a little bit of a miracle story with you and that is the point of what I was talking about before my cat having a near death experience. So the night before the accident it was just me at home and I was watching just TV and my cat Antoshka was just chilling on the other side of the living room just sitting on the ground and just looking at me and I just felt this presence and this intuition and this what was the word? I felt impressed. That's the word. I felt impressed just to reach my hand out and pray for him. And I, if, if you're not religious, that is totally fine. But I do believe in God. And I just felt impressed to reach my hand out and pray for my cat. And I've never done that before with any of my pets, let alone even a person. Like I've never just reached out and prayed for someone like that. But I felt really impressed to do it. And I was like, okay, like, what's the harm of praying for your cat you know what I mean it's a cat so I was sitting on the couch and he was on the ground I I just reached my arm out and I prayed a prayer of protection over my cat which I've never done before and I was like okay cool like just prayed for my cat and then went on with my day really didn't think much of it then I went to bed and then the next morning my husband gets up earlier than I do And I wasn't awake yet, but he was already up. And next thing I know is he rushes into the room and he's just like, I need your help with this. And I was like, okay. So he throws me my like hoodie. I thought he just wanted me to help him get ready to go, you know, make him tea or like, you know, just help him get out of the house, you know? So I just put the hoodie on, I'm getting out of bed. And then he tells me, and Toshika has been attacked by a coyote. And at this point, I'm not freaking out. My basal instinct is just to solve the problem, to fix it, to do my best to make sure that he's okay, right? Nothing's going to get fixed if I'm freaking out. And so I just look at him and I'm just like, let's take him to the vet now. And then my husband's like, no, I think he's fine. He's just very like stressed out. And then I look at him like, no, let's just take him to the vet. I'm not going to insert any pictures because it's a little bit graphic. Uh, You know what? I'll insert pictures. Um, I'll insert pictures of what my cat looks like. Trigger warning, if you don't like blood or anything like that, don't look at the next following pictures. Just fast forward a bit. So my husband was outside with the cat. Usually my cat is on a leash and we are supervising him within our fence. Um, But this morning my husband didn't have him on a leash, but he was still watching Antoshka. Antoshka was running around in the backyard, whatever, and he knows not to cross over the fence line. My husband went in to get water for less than a minute and when he started walking back out he heard like my cat like hiss or screech or something like that while he was walking out and he couldn't find Antoshka so he looked over our fence and saw the coyote and so he obviously ran towards the coyote and there was Antoshka just like his belly was on the ground he was kind of sprawled out like this ears back because when cats ears are back that means like they're threatened so his ears were back and he was hissing and the coyote had him the coyote was over top of him and so when I was seeing my cat he was already inside he was just breathing really heavily he had coyote slobber like all over his head and I noticed there was a little a little puncture and there was a little blood on the right side of his face and it seemed like his right eye was fine but 
he would close it like it was tired and I knew the blood was near his eye so I'm like okay we just need to go to the vet so it was early in the morning and not too many vets were open so I think we drove him to like an animal hospital by this time like I was already crying because I was just getting triggered from losing a pet last year this time and I told my husband I was like I can't do this again like having outdoor cats is like quite dangerous like I just I just feel like I can't lose another pet again and it's only a year apart and it's just like I I just didn't want to go through that again like you know if you know pet grief it's like none other so we got to the vet and I was already crying in the office or whatever but I was like telling them what happened and stuff they were super great they cleaned the cut they double checked him over there was no like internal bleeding that they could see obviously so when they check for internal bleeding we had to watch to make sure his gums didn't turn white that just means the circul um the blood isn't circulating in his body properly but that didn't happen we also had to make sure that his breathing was fine just to make sure he didn't have a punctured lung because a lot of the times when coyotes bite they said they sometimes shake their prey back and forth and that can cause a punctured lung but thank goodness that didn't happen my husband thinks when he heard the screech is the first time the coyote actually like dug his teeth into him. Luckily, he missed Antoshka's eye by centimeters and his eyes are completely fine. It was just a puncture wound like around here and a little bit on his shoulder. So, you know, he got nicked there, but it was a deep wound. They shaved the wound area and Antoshka was such a good boy like he wasn't freaking out because typically like if you even try to brush him he will get annoyed and run away but I think he knew that these the vet was trying to help him so he let the vet shave um, shave him as well as they clean the area with this non-stinging kind of alcohol and then they gave him a antibiotic shot because a lot of the times coyotes could have you know dirty teeth and bacteria and they don't want him to get an infection so they gave him a shot of antibiotics as well as painkillers and those painkillers lasted about a day so he was just super tired and groggy and he wasn't eating much but since the bite his face is so small right so since the bite was kind of like missed his eye but it was deep enough to like hit his cheek he was having troubles eating his little little kitten food because it was like dry food right and but he was having troubles opening and closing his mouth so what I did is I got like tuna and I just blended it into this liquid added some water so it's not as salty but I blended it and he was just drinking that and eating that a part of his so it was liquid and food at the same time so we did that for about a day and a half and then he slowly was a little sore still but was able to eat his cat food but it was such a close call like I was still stressing out just monitoring him making sure like his gums didn't turn white that he was breathing properly but now he like really wants to go outside I'm just we'll ease into it maybe but there's no way he's going outside without a leash ever again and without supervision the whole time but yeah that was a miracle story and I just find it so amazing that a few days before it happened I felt like very like something I don't want to say I manifested it but like I felt off but I didn't want to resonate in that feeling off like something bad was gonna happen or like something felt eerie I just didn't know what it was and I'm like I just I don't want to manifest negativity and stuff like that so I kind of just pushed it under the rug and then a few days went by and then I felt impressed to pray for my cat I prayed for my cat and then the next morning a coyote attacked him thank god that he is fine and he is f almost fully recovered here he is just full of life running around playing trying to go outside like cuddling again allowing people to hold him like he is back to normal um he has a, I'm glad he has a short memory when it comes to that after the fact I was just treating him I bought him a new bed I give him a lot of treats and what resonated with me I saw this post and it was like make sure you play with your pets play with your cat play with your dog whatever it is because they are your best friends for a short amount of time but you're their best friend for their whole life and that really stuck with me and Toshka, you might have a pet at home, my cat, whatever. We have them for like maybe 14, 18, 20 years if they're lucky. 
and then we move on and we have more life to live but for their entire life we are their best friend and why not treat them why not like make them feel special play with them i feel like if you're a pet owner you understand you get it like they're like your child you want the best for them and if you spoil a cat like what's the worst that can happen <laughs> that was the miracle story that i wanted to tell you guys about my previous cat his name was vasya and he was a black farm cat we lost vasya which was really hard um i didn't even want antoshka after we lost vasya because i'm like i just don't want to open my heart to another pet again because they don't live as long and the heartbreak is unbearable but i think of antoshka as my rainbow baby <laughs> after i lost vasya He's my rainbow baby that, you know, kind of opened my heart again to having pets and extending love towards animals again. Okay, to move on to something a little more lighter, we are moving on to the portion of the podcast where I'm going to talk about girl math. And I took to Instagram, Toshka, don't do that, Toshi. Sorry, and Toshka's so curious and this setup is super fragile. I'm going to take him out to the living room because... I do not want him to get hurt or knock any of this down. As I was saying, we're going to move on to the part of the podcast where we're talking about girl math. And if you have not seen girl math online, on TikTok and Instagram, whatever it is, it's basically, I know some girls get annoyed because it's like, <laughs> why are you generalizing all of us? Like, not all of us do this. But for those who do, that's why I'm saying girl math. I'm not saying every single girl does this, but in general. It's this trend going around where it's talking about how girls justify their purchases, how they do their finances, and it's just called girl math. So for example, if in my mind, when I pay with cash, I feel like it's practically free because the money in my account doesn't go down even though I'm spending money. So I just consider it as free. Or let's say I'm using my Starbucks card and upload money onto there and I use my Starbucks card to buy a drink, that drink is also free because the money in my account didn't go down. So I took to Instagram and asked my followers and a few of you, what are some of the girl math equations that you do? And I found them really funny, so we are going to share them. So someone says, if I plan to spend $200, but I used 150, I made $50. Facts. When you're budgeting for something and then you get it on sale or it's a little cheaper, it's not like you're actually making money, you just save money, but it feels like you made the $50. This one is really funny. Someone said, if it is a buy one, get one half off and I only buy one thing, I'm losing money. <laughs> oh, the FOMO hits hard. That is so true. If there's a buy one, get half off, you only buy the one thing, it feels like you're losing money because you're not getting the deal. But that's how marketing really gets you with that, like not scarcity mindset, but like you feel like, oh, I'm missing out on this deal. When in reality, they're just getting you to purchase a little bit more. But I totally understand that logic. Another person said, if I buy something months in advance, like a trip or a concert, by the time it happens, it's free. I can personally relate to this because when we booked our Mexico trip, we booked another trip coming up in a little bit. By the time that the tickets are bought, the hotels are booked, the transportation is booked, and it's months in advance by the time you actually get to go on the trip and you're not having to pay for the ticket you're not having to organize the hotel all that it feels like you're getting it for free when in reality you paid for it months in advance another person said when i get there's a few of these so like i'm not gonna have to react to every single one of them but i love them someone said when i get money on return it's free money that is that is funny because you can relate that to if you go out with your friends and you pay for your friend and yourself and then the next time they pay for you, it kind of feels like you're making money when in reality you're both spending money. <laughs> but that's a good way of thinking ab about it. Someone also said, my preloaded Starbucks card equals free Starbucks until I have to load it again. Mm -hmm. Someone said, if it's a refund I received in cash or a refund in general, I'm making money slash spending it doesn't count. Someone also agreed with me saying, if ca if it's cash, no money spent. Someone said, if I pay with my iPhone or Apple Pay, <sighs> this one's funny. If I pay with my iPhone, Apple pays for it. Mm -hmm. I 100% get that. It's so easy just to double click on your phone and pay with your Apple Pay. And it just feels like fake money because you don't really see the cash or the money going out of your account. You're just, you know, Apple's paying for it. Thanks, Apple. 
Thanks, Steve Jobs. Okay, someone said, the punch card at stores and restaurants are a smart investment and it saves you money. I think, yeah, it's a marketing strategy. You know, when you get a punch card, you're like, okay, I only have three more times to visit there until I get a free yogurt or a free whatever. And that just like makes you want to keep purchasing from there just to get that one free meal or that one free item. I could see how that could be an investment. I guess I'm just that type of person that, I don't know, I just feel like I couldn't be bothered to get a punch card. I don't go anywhere often enough to be able to, I guess, use that. Um, if Amazon had a punch card, yeah, I would fill that up quick, you know, but like actual stores and restaurants, if you're that type of person, I could see how that could be justified in your mind to go 10 times to get the one free item. But for me personally, I just couldn't be bothered. Adding more to my cart to get free shipping instead of paying for shipping. <gasps> Simple maths. I 100% do that, which that is girl math. At least you're getting something extra. I've done that a lot of times. Or I've put things in my cart and then I see the total and I look at the shipping and I'm like, it's not worth it. And then I just don't get anything. Someone said, if I bought a concert ticket, I'm getting in there for free. <laughs> Yep, it kind of relates to the one in the beginning. Anyways, that was something a little fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Hopefully, it won't be that long before I put another one out. But always remember, if you want to participate in the episode, share some story times, dilemmas, whatever it is, start a conversation. You can always email in to brunchwithisome at gmail.com. Please follow this podcast, download the episodes. You can also find me on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, at Isome V. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next podcast episode.